Welcome back, Ian Nerds. Today, uh, I am going to give you an overview and demo of the Hook Wizard amp. For the gear nerds amongst you, you already know what this is. It's designed for the modern player who wants to hear real valve sounds, but have all of the control uh, that a lot of modern equipment has, in particular modelers. Um, when Paul Davids did a video about this, one of the things that he did is say that this is like a valve based Kemper. It's a head and uh, you can configure it how you want. Now it does an awful lot of things and I'm going to try and give you a quick overview of some of them. But the sounds I'm going to do today are going to be all based on the clean channel. The clean channel has two main sounds. One is the Fender blackface sound and the other is the Vox sound, the Vox AC30 type sound. There is also a deep switch on both of those channels. So in effect, you get four clean sounds. Let's just listen to uh, my preferred sounds. So here's the Fender clean sound uh, with the deep switch on. gain on so we can hop over to the amp pop the gain up a little bit and try again So that was the Fender clean sound uh, with the deep switch on. Um, now on this, if you put the mids up uh, a little bit, it changes the sound altogether. So that was with the mids up to about halfway. back down as you can see much sweeter uh, with the mids down with the mids up it goes to my ears a little bit boxy if I put the mids all the way up well I'm just going to put them 75% uh, about three o'clock I'm going to say it be controversial here but the a more mid forward sound to me is a little bit more like that two rock kind of a clean uh, and less sweet uh, and vintage sounding this is all neck uh, single coil pickup uh, by the way this is a PRS special semi hollow my favorite guitar at the moment here's the bridge humbucker with the uh, fender uh, clean mode <laughs> Thank you. 
So um, if you push it with the humbucker, you get a bit of dirt. We'll put the gain up in a little bit. At the moment, the gain's on about 50%. So this is um, what I would say is on this amp my go-to clean kind of sound um, deep switch on and uh, drop the mids down boost the treble a little bit perhaps I might drop the bass a little bit more than it is at the moment by the way there's a presence control on the back of the head I've got that turned up to about 75% uh, this demo is going to take so long, I can't go through all of the tones where the presence changed. Just one comment to say, it's not a very noticeable presence uh, change. You can hear the difference, that's for sure. You definitely hear the difference, but it's not uh, a transformation in the sound. Let's, uh, let's pump up the gain. Now, the problem with the gain here is, so gain's on about 75% now. Volume down. Now, even with my low output single coil, you can hear some dirt getting in now. That was nearly working out so well. Let's try it again. I think it's got a very, very sweet uh, overdrive. And if we just go to the humbuckers again. Very American sounding overdrive to me. Relatively speaking, these are low output humbuckers, so you hit it with something harder and uh, it would overdrive even more. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but because the deep switch is on, I'm getting a bit of a flubby uh, warm sound into the overdrive and personally I don't like it so with the deep switch on uh, the overdrive's not so good of course with a humbucker I'm uh, someone who plays uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of stuff all the time so I'm always on my neck uh, pickup so um, on a bridge pickup I think it would be uh, it would be kind of different Kind of flubbiness. Uh, let's go, let's take the gain all the way uh, to the max. So let's see on this setting if we can get that kind of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan thing, which. Uh... So I put the gain. You can definitely hear that warmth. But what I'm going to do is to cut the bass back. I'm going to do hopefully what a kind of a tube screamer thing would do boost the mids up, cut the bass back, and then see what happens. So you can hear those bass notes are not really well defined. The uh, that bass switch is not helpful when we've got um, when we've got a lot of gain on it. Let's just switch to the bridge humbucker to give you a taste of maximum gain on this with the mids up bass cut and treble up.
by the way, there's a lot to go through on this amp. I've got a cab and IR set up here. There are 16 choices on the dial and I just happened to have picked one. If I went through and showed you, I, I will try and show you some IRs, different IRs, but clearly there's a lot of tone tweaking to be done here. I've also, uh, I probably already put it up on the screen, but I've also got the reverb on because I can't live without reverb, of course. Let's go back and go over the Fender channel again. This time I've switched the uh, bass switch off. Um, now, when you do that, you have to adjust your volume and everything. Now, luckily, of course, this amp has got loads of presets. So uh, if you were uh, inclined to gig it, I'm betting loads of you aren't gigging guitarists, but if you, uh, I'm a home player, but if you were inclined to gig it, of course, the, the volume drop would be no difference when you're switching between settings because you just set the volumes to be equivalent on your presets and then you just hit a button on your MIDI controller. Uh, but um, as you can see, the volume's gone right down, although I did turn the gain down, actually. So now I'm going to go back to pretty much the same settings we had before. So I'm going to put the bass uh, up just above noon, uh, the mids way down and the treble on about 65%. Now I hope you can hear straight away that the... This isn't such a rich, full 3D sound. This is a much slimmer sound. If anything, you get a little bit of that black face glassy. Thing. This sounds a little bit more compressed. You can kind of hear my... Now bear in mind, I've got the treble turned right up and the mids turned right down. So if I take the treble back a notch, this takes that edge off. But I'm still at the, near the middle settings on the treble here. getting somewhere near something gentle let's just uh, if we take the treble and really crank it Treble's only on 75%, uh, but it's uh, not quite right, in my opinion, at that point. Uh, of course, it all depends on your guitar. This, uh, you know, if you have a darker guitar. If I bring the mids up now, bring the treble back to a more sensible place. And this is now uh, pretty much all the controls. Treble, middle and bass on uh, 12 o'clock. <laughs> say this sounds much more like a real Fender, uh, a deluxe Fender. Um, you know there's a lot of fans of the Fender Deluxe out there uh, and that's great uh, but I'm not the biggest fan. It's a little bit harsh to my ears. I had a Fender Princeton for a long time and the Princeton is much sweeter and much gentler, a little bit more like this. Um, <laughs> Having 
having said that, when you know, it's uh, when you're listening to something at home on its own, it's very different to when it's in the mix or you're playing with other people. So the deluxe probably cuts through better, and I suspect this would cut through better. <laughs> Of course, you can do kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan things with it, but uh, it's not right to my ear. Is it right? You know, there's 101 different Stevie Ray Vaughan sounds. Um, it's, I prefer it with the bass switch on, to be honest. Uh, it's smoother. It's, I mean, possibly that's more Stevie-like. This has, the, again, this was, that was with the mids at the middle. If I turn them all the way up. <laughs> a tiny bit boxy to my ears with the mids turned up. Uh, if I go completely the other way and drop the mids all together, oh much sweeter, much much sweeter. I just played that. Um, so oh if we just go back to that kind of uh, anything. we as we push the gain up a little bit so all of this all of these demos of the fender channel with the deep switch off have all been on low gain so let's turn the gain up and let's see if we can get to some overdriven stevie um i just say overdriven stevie because we could go for anything you know hendrix like soft stuff uh, stuff we might do that on the vox channel funny enough so uh let's drop the volume pop the gain up so So this has this, uh, I suppose, this kind of edge of breakup thing that we all talk about. And then bridge humbug. Kind of so this is uh the this channel with 75% gain it's not really overdriven until you put the bridge humbucker on now I don't know if you remember but the 
bass switch on, it completely overpowered the sound. This doesn't. So... Let's try that again, Anna. Is that the right sound for that riff? No, uh, it's not quite right, but at least it's not being overpowered by that dreadful uh, bass. Now let's see if I can get a bit closer to it. Stevie tones by dropping the mids down. See, that sounds much better. So you need a pedal in front of that. Having said that, we've got tons of options on the game channel. Um, and I haven't set up loads of presets. So every time I play this, I end up fiddling with loads of settings. And sometimes I get to this really super duper overdrive tone. And then I save it and I don't even remember where I've saved it. So, um, so the clean channel doesn't quite go fully, the Fender clean channel doesn't quite fully go Stevie Ray Vaughan, but for that's a low output neck pickup. So for your average player, it goes pretty much into well overdriven crunch. And of course, if I go bridge humbucker again. Again. 
So I think for most players, you could spend your whole time on the clean channel and get some really satisfying sounds going from crystal clean uh, and 3D and all of that stuff all the way through to some uh, bark and bite. Uh, now, let's have a look at the Vox channel. Now, the interesting thing about the Vox channel is <laughs> it can be hard to tell the difference. I had a look online. There, there is a, uh, there's a, an EQ modeler because I think the main difference uh, with between amps quite often is EQ. Oh my God, I'm gonna say something controversial. But one of the main differences is EQ. So. Uh, I had a look and really the Vox sound, although it does respond differently to the tone controls uh, and so on, it's kind of scooped and uh, the the bottom of the scoop is in a slightly different place than the Fender Blackface, but it's kind of scooped. So, and, and I think you'd be, uh, unless you're doing it absolutely back to back, I think it'd be hard to find, to spot the difference. Anyway, let's just have a listen to uh, the Vox side of this thing. Okay, so let's be logical about it and go back to some very low gain and start all the way at the beginning again. I would say straight away, uh, that sounds a bit boxier, but then that's because I've left the mid control up. So uh, if I go to, again, go to my go-to setting. So this is Vox channel, deep switch on. Uh, I'm gonna drop the mids because I like it and uh, leave the bass on about 12 o'clock and the treble just over 12 o'clock. The gain's um, just above zero. So it's on uh, nine o'clock or 20% or whatever you wanna call it. come through there. I think I can hear the difference. We can try it out. So I'm going to leave the uh, EQ controls exactly where they are. This is exactly the same settings but with the Fender sound. sound like that. Name that tune. Got to be over 50 to name that tune. <laughs> or even over about 70. So, um, you can hear that this is a really warm gentle tone if i go back to the rich humbucker
So uh, that's not my favourite thing at all. Um, if we just... More gain. that bass can't you so let's dial out a bit of the bass with the bass control I've dropped the bass uh, down to about 25% nice sound as I listen to it now it's different to the Fender sound Now the main difference I would say though is when you start overdriving the Vox channel, it uh, it sounds much differenter. <laughs> say to you because we're only on 25% gain we've already got a little bit of break up sounds nice right um, let's go let's drop increase the gain to 50% some chime right we got some chime there that thing that people talk about with vox amps go back to my neck pickup who wants to do all that bridge pickup stuff um, so let's we're on half gain let's uh, let's go to three quarters of the gain some max gain to try that out. This is maximum gain on the Vox channel, still with the bass on. We'll try it again without the bass. impressive for a clean channel. So 
um, lots of gain on the Vox channel, I think. Uh, and uh, to me, the game uh, is it better? It's definitely got that the Vox flavour, uh, the game has got. Uh, just reminded me, let's try. Andy Timmons plays, uh, traditionally he played with a um, Mesa Boogie Lone Star, which had a L84s and was supposed to be a kind of boxy thing. So uh, let's just try a bit of... I'm going to turn a bit of delay on. Okay, it's kind of in the territory. Okay, let's go back and turn the deep switch off now. We're nearly at the end. See if I can think of some more hackneyed dad rock riffs to play to you. Uh, let's drop the gain down this time. So we've got the deep switch off. Gone really quiet. Sounds much better with the deep switch off. So to me, the Fender channel sounds better clean with the deep switch on and the Vox channel sounds better with it off. sweet. Uh, so I've got that scooped down. Uh, I bring the mids up a little bit. Sounds a bit kind of congested to me. Let me max out the mids a bit. tell throughout the demo as you turn the mids up the gain increases but then that's absolutely normal behavior for a passive tone control we're still on very low gain uh, on this particular channel let's drop it let's pop it up to this time we're on 50 percent gain difference between the Vox thing and the Black Place thing on uh, a very familiar sound like that tune. Let's keep turning the gain up to see what happens. So gain on 75% uh, now. Thank you. 
going on. Really nice, really nice. Uh, of course. Now to me, that's, that is ACDC, right? I can't play any ACDC, can I? Again. Let's go, let's go for it. Okay, so that's it. Now let's do some talky talky uh, because uh, I haven't really explained how the amp works at all. So let's go through the front panel. Uh, front panel has got uh, a voice switch, uh, which on the clean channels, as I've said, really only has uh, two main functions, switch between Vox and Fender and deep switch on and off. That's all it does on the clean channel. So let's stick to that. Uh, we've also got a channel switch and we've also got a preset switch, which is between the presets on A and the presets on B. I don't need to go through all that because you could read the manual, but basically there are 16 presets and on A and bank A and bank B has got another 16 presets. It's just a way of arranging them on the, on the screen. You've got a master volume. The master volume is absolutely excellent. Uh, you can see on here, you've got a, a gain control, a volume control and a master volume control. Basically, the master volume control is uh, like one of those volume controls that you can put in your effects loop of a really uh, touchy amp. What it means is this amp is probably the best amp I've ever used. Well, that's probably exaggeration, but it's an excellent amp for home use. Excellent. The other clever thing is the master volume is not in the presets. So you can set all of your presets up at home volume and then all you need to do is just turn the volume up when you get to the gig. So setting the overall volume level is completely manual, it's not in the preset, but setting the difference between the volumes of the presets is in the preset. So if you want a solo boost and you want an extra piece of volume, you can bake that into your preset. So it's really really well thought out uh, in terms of those things. Uh, we then got the bass, middle and treble. Now I haven't been really scientific and systematic about demoing it because there's just so much range and so on. Personally, uh, I think the middle control is, I've yet to see why it sounds so boxy when it goes over uh, midway. I, on almost all the settings, I prefer it. Uh, lower. I don't know whether that's a function of it needing to work with so many different circuit types uh, or whether it's a specific design choice uh, by the designer. And I know the designer is uh, an incredibly uh, talented musician and gu guitar teacher and he's got a lot of experience playing live so I suspect that if you're playing live that mid control is really really useful but for home use not so great in my opinion. The gain control on the uh, clean channels has a fantastic range. Now, can 
can the clean Fender channel quite do Stevie Ray Vaughan the way I would like to hear it? Unfortunately not. The dirty channels can, but this is a clean channel uh, only video. Can you get a very wide range of tones out of the clean channel on this beast? Absolutely. You can get some beautiful boutique sounding cleans. You can get some great edge of breakup and you can get some crunch and overdrive out of it. No problem at all. And there's such a lot of tweaking on here that it would be really easy to uh, dial in your guitar with your room, with your cabinet and whatever. Um, actually, the other thing I would just mention there, uh, does it take pedals well? Fantastically well. It's very calm about taking pedals and random things don't happen. I've got a whole bunch of pedals, as you can see here. And the pedals do behave uh, exactly as you would expect. In fact, maybe um, it would be nice if it had a tiny bit more character because it's very, very steady and stable. You put the pedal on and it exact, behaves exactly how you would expect. There's no sort of, oh, wow, you know, what kind of a weird sound is that? There's none of that. that that's just, it's just straight ahead works. So very, very impressive. Um, let's talk about the specs for a minute. It's got... Uh, it's 45 watts and it's got EL34s. I know a lot of you watching this thing are religious about, oh, 6V6s sound a certain way and 6L6s sound a different way and EL34s sound like this and EL84s sound like that. And you could probably tell, and you can tell the difference between those things. Of course you can, if you try them back to back. But most of the differences in tone between different amplifiers uh, comes from the preamp design and the EQ in the preamp. So uh, some of those differences you're hearing. So, so we've got EL34s here, which are traditionally, I suppose, the Marshall uh, power tube. But do these blackface tones sound convincing? Yes, they do. Could you dial them in? I think... When you take the bass switch off the Fender sound and uh, you tweak the uh, thing, you get, to be honest, that scratchy Strident 6v6 sound, which I said earlier I don't really like. That's kind of Fender Deluxe, um, Blackface Deluxe, not Tweed Deluxe. Um, so that sort of sound. Um, so I'm really not worried about the fact that it's the L34s at all. Uh, there's a whole other bunch of stuff. Everything you've heard today has been recorded through the direct out and uh, gone uh, through an IR that's loaded into the amp. I could actually send it out without an IR and put it into an IR in my recording system. But gosh, that is just so many options. It's unbelievable. Uh, the reverb, they don't really say the reverb, but I would call it a hall reverb. It's quite tasteful. It's not amazing, uh, but it's pretty tasteful reverb. Overall, what are my conclusions? So, have you heard a lot of my conclusions as we've been going through? Overall, what would I say about the clean channel? I like it. I think there's only one little downside, <laughs> uh, which is a bit odd. I've also got a Tone King Imperial, and I love the clean channel of the Tone King Imperial. And I've put the two of them back to back on an ABY foot switch. And I can't quite dial the Wizard to sound exactly like the Imperial. Now, of course, they're going through different cabinets uh, and incidentally with different speakers. Um, do they get close? Yeah, very close. And if it wasn't back to back, uh, I probably wouldn't know the difference. But when it is back to back, you can hear the difference. And that slightly annoys me because I think with so many tweaking, with so many settings that I could tweak, surely I could get really close to my Tone King Imperial. And I, and I kind of can't. So uh, that frustrates me a little bit. OK, uh, you've heard me ramble on for so long. Um, I'm building up to doing a demo of the Dirty Channel, but that's way more complicated because there's so many more settings and different things you can do on the Dirty Channel. And plus, I'm not really the sort of player that plays that stuff most of the time. So uh, it's a bit harder for me to, to demo. Um, the Dirty Channel, just to preview that, the Dirty Channel is, I would say, goes... It doesn't really say in the manual. I think the vintage side of it is supposed to be Marshall-esque 
Well, I wouldn't say it exactly sounds like a Marshall to me. It's more like a Bogner than a Marshall, uh, which really suits me because I much prefer Bogner uh, drive sounds to Marshall drive sounds. But I suppose that's Marshall would be more, you know, what you're talking about. And then they have a modern setting. And I can't, I think, you know, normally you'd say, well, a traditional vintage Marshall sound is a JTM 45 or a Plexi. And then you'd say a modern one was a JCM 800, etc. But it doesn't sound like that to me. It more sounds like it's like a Bogner in the vintage thing. And it's more like a Mesa Boogie kind of thing, very forward and modern sounding uh, with lots of clarity. Uh, I don't know if I really, it's not exactly my thing. Anyway, that's a whole other video to come, which would be the Dirty Channel. Okay. If you've made it that far, uh, you know what I'm gonna say. Please hit the like button, please hit subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to see more nerdy nonsense like this about gear, please leave a comment down below. I really do answer all the comments. Uh, when I'm a uh, YouTube gajillionaire, uh, I won't answer the comments. But at the moment, I've only got uh, not that many subscribers. So I do answer all the comments. And uh, some of the comments I get actually trigger new videos. So if you want to see a video or if you want to see something about the Hook Wizard, please, please, please leave a comment and ask for something and I'll see if I can throw together a video for you. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.